I did time with my friend Kevin. Um, he's a great artist, and he did a lot of help with me when I would screw up my work. He fixed it, and he taught me a lot, a lot of things. We decided to do some work again together. So he does some work, I do some work on it, and stuff like that. And this is before it's signed, so I'm gonna put them out, and I'm gonna sign them personally. This is what you'll get. This is artwork. This is my art. I will sign this, I'm not sure exactly where yet. The sleeve over here, maybe I'll put it in silver. And I'm gonna send the certificate with it. She's still alive, actually. So if she, I hope she sees it. And if she sees it and she gets in touch with me, we're gonna send her one with my signature on it. When you get it, you will be able to see her eyes are beautiful. Everything about her, she's beautiful. It gets me with these actresses and stuff. Years ago, no fake lips, no fake boobs, no nothing. Just natural, just gorgeous, gorgeous women. A lot of the old Italian people would love this. Italian women and people grew up knowing who she is. This is Sophia Loren. Now it's a limited edition. I'm sure you gave somebody this as a Christmas gift. They would be in love with it. Like I said, especially um, older people, Italian people would love this. Hey guys, when I did time with my friend Kevin, um, he's a great artist. And he did a lot of help with me when I would screw up my work. He fixed it and he taught me a lot, a lot of things. We decided to do some work again together. So he does some work, I do some work on it and stuff like that. And this is before it's signed, so I'm gonna put them out and I'm gonna sign them personally. This is what you'll get. This is art. This is my art. I will sign this, I'm not sure exactly where yet. The sleeve over here, maybe I'll put it in silver. And I'm gonna send the certificate with it. She's still alive actually. So if she, I hope she sees it. And if she sees it and she gets in touch with me, we're gonna send her one with my signature on it. When you get it, you will be able to see her eyes are beautiful. Everything about her, she's beautiful. It gets me with these actresses and stuff. Years ago, no fake lips, no fake boobs, no nothing. Just natural, just gorgeous, gorgeous women. A lot of the old Italian people would love this. Italian women and people grew up knowing who she is. This is Sophia Loren. Now it's a limited edition. I'm sure you gave somebody this as a Christmas gift. They would be in love with it. Like I said, especially um, older people, Italian people would love this. Hey guys. <laughs> Fucking people say things. You know, and I, I might as well say what it was. Uh, somebody asked a question about DB doing porn. Some street guy said he knows for sure he was doing porn. He wasn't doing porn. He was a distributor of porn. There was companies that made porn movies. He would buy them and distribute all over the world. He was a big distributor. It wasn't a porn. He didn't make the movies. And um, so I was just clearing that. It annoys the hell out of me how people label somebody and really don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Awesome. So I made porn. <laughs> <laughs> Sammy, that OC Shorts interview, everybody's loving it. Surprise drop last Friday. I heard that it's at, on his and on mine, it's like a 99% favorable thing. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. He's a smart guy. He's a great researcher. Um, I like him. He's not evil. He don't go after people. He don't do things like that. So I'm, I think I'm going to enjoy this little merge partnership, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do a lot more with him. Uh, I guarantee it. Um, he thanked me. Um, and he's real happy with it, too. He could talk for himself, but I'm sure he's real happy with it. Um, and let's watch his subscribers fly up, you know. So if you like my stuff, hit subscribe. And if you're starting to watch OC Shorts as well, hit subscribe for him too.
Absolutely. I love that in the interview at the end, you said, hold my feet to the fire, fact check me. You yeah. can fact check six He's a great fact checker. Oh, He's yeah. got tremendous connections. And now I just saw another video with somebody saying, yes, they have some sort of report that he was shot with a shotgun, not a pistol. Oh, wow. And then they asked him, did you think Sammy killed him? And the guy, the interviewer said, no, he didn't. But he's part of the hit. So and that's just what I said with OC. So it's starting to be confirmed. All these liars want to do is drag these people, poor people, a horrible loss, mm. through the mud. Only to smear my name. Right. And, and they don't care who they hurt. So if anybody in that family is listening, that's what they're doing to you. Absolutely. So, all right, let's go on with our show and what we're going to talk about. Yeah. You ready? I'm ready as spaghetti. <laughs> al dente. <laughs> yeah, it has to be al dente. Okay, Sammy, let's start off with Xavier. So Xavier has a question. He said, why was there no retaliation after Frankie was blown up, unfortunately, even though you didn't know who did it at the moment you guys had to have had an idea? I always had an idea that it was chin behind it. I, I never thought that it was uh, gas pipe and, uh, and them as well. But um, you can't, you know, it's not a fight. It's not a kid's game. When you're killing people, you want to be sure that you're killing the right people. I don't want to kill, kill an innocent person and find out later it wasn't him. It was Joe Blow who did it. So, and I think jo John felt the same way. So we held back. It's not that we were shy. We, if, as soon as we found out, we were going to retaliate. Okay, we have Ace Tech. Sammy, when you refused to lie at the sit down with Paul, when Neil took up for you when you refused to lie about threatening De Bono for trying to screw you, that's balls. How did I? Oh, and then he asks, how can he get an autograph? You can get an autograph by going to ourthing.tv <laughs> in our merch shop. Yes. And what was the question? I mean, the last part of the question? He just said that it was, it was crazy how um, you refused to lie at the sit-down with Paul, and then Neil ended up uh, taking up for you when you refused to lie about threatening De Bono, who was trying to screw you. He just well, said that that's crazy. Well, to be honest, I was going to lie. I thought about it because it is, it's, a, it's a rule. You raise your hands to a made guy, you die. But when I looked and he was smirking at me like he knew he had me boxed and cornered. I, I just, I couldn't lie. I just, I choked on it. I just couldn't uh, give him that kind of satisfaction, even if my life hung in the balance. And uh, thank God, I think if Neil wasn't there and uh, said what he said and did what he did, I probably wouldn't be here. Adam Julius says, hey boss, did you know a guy named Sal Sam Ventimiglia? He's my grandfather and used to play piano in the bars back in the day. He said he knew you, not for sure if he's telling the truth or not. Huh. He's your grandfather? Mm-hmm. I doubt if your grandfather is lying. You know, I, I had a, a club, Caesars East, we had piano players there. I don't know where he did his entertainment. So I met a lot of guys. The name don't ring a bell, but um, I'm sure your grandfather isn't lying. He didn't tell you anything crazy. He just said he knew me or saw me or whatever. And I, I would, I, I'm not going to call him a liar. Uh, I don't think he lied. He probably uh, saw me, maybe met me. Listen, I was very sociable. I was open with people and very sociable. I didn't think when I walked around like my shit didn't stink. So I, I made you know, contact with a lot, a lot of people, and I left an impression on a lot of people. You know, there was a woman who said something about me when I was in tallies that I made a donation to a woman's baseball team. And for the life of me, I couldn't remember it. But I, I, I didn't think she was lying. And then she sent me a picture of a whole bunch of women in baseball, they were playing baseball, and they had the tallies t-shirts on. So I did make contributions to them. When I saw the picture of them, it clicked. But you know, gotta remember, not everything is gonna click. I'm, 
at being asked questions that go back 40, 50. Now I'm doing something in Hollywood. They're even asking me questions of 60 something years ago. And it's hard to remember every little detail. And one of the questions they asked me uh, on that day of the story, was it snowing? I said, what the fuck do I know? 50 something, 60 years ago, you want me to tell you if it was snowing? What do I know? What am I, a weather reporter? <laughs> Okay, we have Elgato. He said, why was Mr. Anastasia hated? Anastasia was hated because they called him the Mad, Mad Hatter. He was killing people left and right. I'm gonna give you a crazy story that happened. One day, him and his crew was watching television. And I believe it, the guy was Willie Sutton. Willie Sutton was a famous bank robber from down south. He robbed the bank. He came out, some guy tackled him to the ground and waited for the cops to, to get him, and he went back to prison. Anastasia was watching it and said, now Willie's not a bad guy. Why did that guy do that? He was getting an award, a citizen's award. So they mentioned his name and where he was from and everything like that. And he got a guy in the crew and said, go down and kill this fucking guy. Now everybody was in shock. We have nothing to do with all of that. You know, to ask a guy to go out and risk his life and kill somebody over something crazy like this is crazy. And uh, that bothered a lot of people. And the guy did go down and kill this guy, one. Then he turned around to break the link, so to speak. He killed the maid guy who did it. He made him do a piece of work and then he killed him to protect himself. That, that's where he got the label, the Mad Hatter. And uh, he was extremely dangerous when he first started and took over the Gambino family. He, rep he represented, uh, um, I forgot their name, but they were a pack of killers. All of them were killers. A lot of them were Jewish guys. Murder Inc. Murder Inc. He controlled it. And uh, everybody was afraid of him. The bosses didn't know. When you're not stable like that, you know, I'm not afraid of a tough guy or a killer. I am afraid of Roy DeMeo. I'm not afraid of him, I'm, but I don't know what the fuck is going through his mind. And uh, so that's what happened with him. And eventually I had enough of him. He wanted to kill Carlo Gambino, which created a small little mini war. I went into that already. Um, and it was okayed, I think, by the commission. A couple of people, different families were involved in that hit, uh, from what I understand. And, uh, and they killed him. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so Ryan Brown asks, Sammy, in your opinion, what would have happened if Paul and Tommy were hit with Neil Delacroix when Neil Delacroix was alive? I also heard that Iceman claimed he was there as a backup shooter on the hit, that was total BS, right? Without a doubt, the Iceman was a fucking total liar. I got arrested but with him, by him. He said that I had killed the cop with him 20 years, 21 years. It was a cold case. I got arrested on that case. It's a whole long story. I won't go into it. He was a stone cold fucking liar. He killed a couple of people. He got the label, the Iceman, because the first guy he killed it was over $1,500, I think. He borrowed $1,500 not to pay it back and killed the guy. He didn't know what to do with the body. He was so unprofessional. He put him in an ice box in his house, hid it, because he didn't know what to do. When he finally found the place and where to get rid of it, he dumped the body. When the cops found the body, it didn't age. It was frozen. And that's how he got his nickname, the Iceman. I think he did it once or twice. but. Um, I had a case with him. I beat the case because he was a fucking liar. Phony, lying, piece of shit. Okay, a couple more questions. <laughs> I'm like, wow. John wants to know, who was the toughest three men you ever met or knew? The toughest what? Men that you ever met or knew. My whole crew was one tougher than the other. Extremely loyal, extremely tough. 
dedicated to me, dedicated to the mafia, and uh, and there were so many others. Frankie the Chico. I'll even put John Gotti in that. He was a tough guy, um, narcissist, and did fucked up things. But he was a tough guy. Um, I mean, most guys in the mafia have killed at one point or another. Very, very rare when you have a guy who never killed. It's just not, it's not part of the life. It's like getting a soldier who's involved in war after war after war, and he never killed nobody. It would be a miracle. Or the guys, I, don't, I won't call him a coward, but I don't know. It just don't happen. Uh, the same thing in the mafia. There's guys who got made, who never killed anybody. And I will give you the reason why they like to bring guys in who have done work, killed somebody. Because they know one thing, he's not a fucking undercover agent. They don't have permission to kill people and join the mafia. One. Um, two, he knows that he's got to keep secrets. He's got his own fucking secrets. And if he does anything stupid, he's always involved. Himself, he's got to involve himself. When you cooperate, you've got to tell everything you did. So they, they're, they're a little more comfortable with a guy who's done work, knows what it's like, and um, he's, uh, that's part of the life. So they accept the guy. So it's very rare if somebody's got a father uh, who's very powerful, maybe he's still a street guy, but he didn't kill anybody. Um, you know, I had that situation with uh, Tato's son, Charlie Boy. He got in, when I got in, he didn't do any work. It's understandable, a father's trying to protect him, keep him out of certain things. Um, when I took over, there was you know, a little rumor, a little people resented. You know, this guy was never, never did a piece of work. And uh, I asked him, would you do a piece of work with me? And he said yes. He did a piece of work with me. I'm not going to get into who or what. But I got the naysayers and I said, listen, I don't want to hear you open your fucking mouth about him not doing work. He did work with me. And he was right on. And Charlie was a tough guy. It didn't mean that he wasn't a tough guy. He's been a tough guy all his life. His father was there, but his father sheltered him from doing certain things. I could totally understand it. I have a son. I love him. I would love to. I never made him for those reasons. I, want, I didn't want him to go kill people. I didn't want to. I wanted a different life for him. There's nothing wrong with that. So I understood why he toddled in, but in a way, you can't get a total respect. It's hard to get total respect if you never did a piece of work. Okay. We have Ryan G. F Sammy, fast forward to now. Would you guys still be able to keep things the way they were back then? How different would things be? I think things would be a lot better, to be honest with you. You know, you need discipline in every way, shape, and form. If you're a criminal and you do something really violent type of crime where a rape, child, child molestation, really horrible crimes, there should be, I'm, I'm, I'm for the death penalty. Mm -hmm. Let's get rid of them. Um, we had Roy DeMeo and people like that who became serial killers. We got rid of them. So uh, I think you have to have some sort of punishment. It's like law enforcement. Now you got people in New York. Um, they, they beat up a cop for no fucking reason. Four guys, illegals, for no reason. They arrested them, they brought them in, they're letting them out, and on the way out, they're walking out like this with their middle fingers sticking straight up in the air like, fuck you. And, that, and, that, and you don't think those guys are gonna do it again? If there's no discipline, you're all you're going to have is chaos. If somebody thinks that he could rape a woman and, and then just try to laugh it off like not a big deal or do one or two years or do no time at all, then you're going to get a lot of women raped. And all of you guys who laugh about it or think about it, think about your mother, your sister, your daughter, your granddaughter. They'll all be exposed to this kind of bullshit. You need discipline. And we need it in the mafia. 
Perfect. Last question, Sammy. Um, John Carl wants to know, Sammy, how did you feel about gas pipe torturing Jimmy Heidel in a warehouse? What was that? John Carl is asking, how did you feel about gas pipe torturing Jimmy Heidel in a warehouse? I don't think he was in a warehouse. I think he was in somebody's home. I heard an interview he did himself. Um, listen, I understand what happened. Um, Angelo Ruggiero, and I believe John was involved in it too, sent Mickey Boy Paradiso to whack uh, gas pipe out. Um, they shot him, they missed him. He was sitting next to his fucking daughter in a car. Now, I could understand the violence that must have went through. He was a tough guy to begin with, a super tough guy, a little crazy. I could imagine how he felt. And he tried to run away from his daughter, so because figuring they would go after him. They didn't try to kill the daughter, thank God. But uh, he did get shot. He survived. Now he had this kid who was on the hit, captured him. He was making him talk. Uh, maybe the kid didn't talk at first, and he tortured him. I wasn't there. I don't know. This is stuff I heard. Um, he said in his interview he didn't torture him. Um, but gas pipe brought Jimmy Brown, Joe Butch, and maybe even Danny Marino to the house. They saw him sitting tied up in a chair. Um, and he told them right to their face about Angelo giving the order. Mickey Boy gave them the order. They were with Mickey Boy. He was with Mickey Boy. And uh, so on and so forth. So as far as torturing him, I would be a hypocrite to say, if I knew you did that, and right in front of my daughter and risked her fucking life and everything like that, um, when I got you, you would tell me the fucking truth. And I, don't, I really don't know what I would do if you didn't. And I knew you were lying. I might torture you as well. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying. Okay. Thank you, Sammy. Um, real quick, just a couple of shout outs also that I didn't get at the top of the hour. Andre, um, he didn't have a question or anything, just an envelope to you. Brent Willoughby. And then quick shout outs to James, Jason, Jay Marie, Magku, Xavier, John Carl. We see you guys. Do you know where your fans are tuning in from right now? No. You have international. You've got Iran, Ontario, Dubai, um, the UK, Scotland, Ireland, Holland, Boston, New York, Hawaii, AZ, California. You're global, Sammy. Wow, I'm international. <laughs> you are definitely, you're worldwide. Worldwide, <laughs> wow. Yeah, prestige, worldwide. worldwide. <laughs> you know what that's from? Have you seen Step Brothers, Sammy? Where they're like, boats and hoes, boats and hoes. No, I don't. Oh, bro, we gotta watch that one. It's a it. classic. Will Ferrell. Sammy got a lot of super chats. We're gonna start off with JB Weld. If you don't mind sharing, you talk a lot about Paul's greed and the Connecticut captain being reasons why the family turned on him. What were the specific reasons he lost your support? Um, I'm working on, on something in Hollywood. My personal thing he did to me as far as my family, I've done a, a small little video about it. It's going to be in my life story when it comes out. Uh, you'll see it. I don't want to, you know, I'm, now I'm with producers. They don't want me to talk about it. Yeah. But it is going to come out. I'm not trying to hide it, but he did something horrible. I, you know, was involved in a murder with my brother-in-law. And uh, so I'm just going to leave it like that. It'll come out in the, in the movie, when, when scripted show, when it comes out. And it's not too far in the future. I think maybe a year or so. Mm -hmm. um, maybe less, maybe a little more. Um, so... Uh, that's one of the things. The second thing is that uh, the thing with the maid bothered me, I'll be honest with you. I don't mind you fucking another broad when you're married. I did it myself. But sticking it right in front of your f wife's face and, and belittling her like that is not something we m want in the mafia. I think you may remember a story I told about Tato was sitting with his gumata in a restaurant, local restaurant, 
and Benson Ice and Carlo Gambino walked in with a few guys. In those days, you don't make a big deal. You don't buy them wine. You don't do nothing. You just look, nod your head gently. That's hello. The rest of the world is not going to be knowing what's going on. The guy gets up next to Carlo Gambino and walks over to Tato, shakes his hand. He says, hi, Tato. Is this your Kumar? Is this Rosie? Yeah. Hey, Tato, go sit in the chair. I just came out of him. I'll talk with Rosie. He's keeping her busy. And he's talking, shooting the shit with her. And uh, Ta uh, Carlo Gambino tells Tato, is that Rosie? Yeah. Oh, she's a beautiful girl. She really is a beautiful woman. You come in here often, don't you? Yeah. You come in with Rosie every once in a while? Yeah. You come in here with your wife? Yeah. What do you think they say, you know, when they see this? The people who run the place, the own the place, the waiters, the waitresses, what do you think they say? Oh, no, they're not going to say nothing. No, no, I know they're not going to say nothing because they're afraid of you. But they might say, oh, look, at Rosie's so much better looking than his wife, or vice versa, or whatever. They're going to talk. It's just nature. Do you love your wife? Oh, of course I love my wife. Carl turned and looked at him in the face and said, do you love me? He said, of course I love you, Carl. And he said to Tato, I hope you don't love me like you love your wife. Because it's a disrespect to his wife. Mm -hmm. So he's teaching him goes an usher in that stadium. We don't buy it. You want to play? Go play. You don't shit where you eat. You don't belittle your wife by doing something like that. So you could go to Philadelphia. You can go somewhere else. Uh, in the same town, the same neighborhood, it's disrespectful. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing that I think uh, lost Paul's respect. He was fucking around with his maid. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while, the, 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 his wife would say, uh, could you make me eggs? Or make it yourself, I'm busy. Now, if it was me, if I was Paul and heard the maid telling my wife that, I'd grab her by the fucking seat of her pants and kick her out the fucking door. Get out of here. Mm -hmm. You know, my wife tells you to do something, you do it. You're a maid, I'm paying you. Mm -hmm. But because he was having an affair with her, he tolerated that. And one of the cars in the garage, a Cadillac, he had bought her, it's in his garage. Go park the fucking car somewhere else. Listen, there's a lot of reasons that happened with Paul. Greed. Um, I thought he was the best thing since sliced bread. I loved him when I first got in. I got made under him. And uh, he sounded perfect to me. I did a lot of work with him. I don't mean killings. I mean regular work, construction, unions. I made money with him. Mm -hmm. But um, and then Frankie DeChico, I had a co long conversation with him. And Frankie DeChico wanted to take him out. It goes an usher right again. Put John in. We become the power of behind the throne. I told this whole story a bunch of times. And, uh, and Frankie De Chico was another motivation for me. I loved him like he was my big brother. He was about 14 years older than me. Any time in my life I was in trouble, he was there. Any time. Um, the old man Peruta was super close with Frankie De Chico than me. Uh, I had a lot of ties with him. That was the biggest influence. I didn't grow up with John. I sympathized the situation he was in. Mm -hmm. It was mostly caused by Angelo's Big Mount in his house, with drugs and everything else, even though he was taking money. But still, he's not the guy who got caught on tape. Later on, he got caught on tape, and we all got arrested again. Um, so uh, that's the thing with Paul. I mean, a couple of the things motivated me to... Uh, go against it. Thank you, Sammy. Thank you, JB, for the great question. Uh, Gilbert Goobies, love you, Mr. Bull. Have a great week, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, let's see, gas can lip. Any tips, Sammy, on how to deal with stresses and grief regarding a single family member or a parent? Thank you. Grief is a tough thing to give advice on. I lost my mother, I lost my father, I lost two sisters. Actually, a sister and a brother before I was even born, so I really had no grief because I never even saw them, knew who they were. Um, but when you love somebody, grief is a tough thing. The only thing I could say, in my opinion that, to this, is that keep all the good memories with you and know that they're in a better place. They're not suffering, they're not in pain. I know people who are sick and in pain, and I only wish they would die. Uh, it's, it's brutal. So if they passed away, keep all the good memories that you have. Whatever they taught you, remember it, whether you use it or not. Sometimes parents will give you advice. They're thinking they love you so much. Sometimes they give you the wrong advice. But they mean well for you all the time. Um, when you get older, you realize what it is to be an adult or a father or a grandfather. Um, I know what I did for my kids. I know how I feel towards my kids. Um, when my kid was in trouble, I didn't even hesitate to take a plea, take the weight. Yeah. And I did 20 years and whatever. There's a video going to come out uh, uh, in another uh, station that we did. It's going to come out in June or July. And you'll see that. So, uh, you know, that's the only way to get through grief. Keeping good memories instead of thinking agony or suffering or pain. or Think of love. All the love. Put that in front. I told the story one time, a friend of mine was dying of cancer, a lot of pain. And uh, when I went to see him, um, he had a big smile on his face. And I said, uh, the pain went away? He says, no, no, it's more than ever. And why are you smiling, bro? It seems like you're, you're happy. I'm thinking of my family. I think of the love that I had in my life. And it overcame the pain. It overcame everything. So that's my advice to you. Love, love good memories that you had. Don't hop on bad memories. And I, that's the only way to get through it. It's awesome, Sammy, thank you. It's really powerful. Ooh, let's see. Uh, just my thoughts. Sammy, what do you think would happen if when you heard John wanted to kill Paul, if you would have went straight to Paul and have told him John wanted him dead. Listen, if I disagreed and didn't go along with it, and Frankie didn't go along with it, John and his crew would have got wiped out. There, there's no way he could have overcame me and my crew, Frankie and his crew, and Paul knowing what's going on. We would have tightened him up. He couldn't overcome it. Of course, he, Paul would have definitely went right to the commission, Chen Gigante and them, while he's alive, and put in a beef, strong beef. He would have had the whole commission against him. The Irish mob, the Westies, people in Sicily, Italy. He was dead. He was finished. Nice. Thank you. Uh, another one from Gas Can Lip uh, in the super chat. Sammy, when you were new to the mob and as green as guacamole, did the elderly monsters tell you anything about Al Capone? I know a lot of stories about Al Capone. I saw a lot of movies about him. I never met him or saw him personally. But you got to remember Al Capone, you know, he's got that big scar and everybody's afraid of that big scar. I would always say I'm not afraid of the scar. I'm afraid of who gave him that fucking <laughs> scar, you know. And then he was a tough guy physically. He was like a bouncer for a while. He was brutal. It was very tough. Um, and they threw him out of New York. They chased him. Mm. That's how he went to Chicago. He didn't go on his own. He was chased. They loved him in Chicago because the Sicilian Mafia and whatever little mafia was there, which hardly nothing, um, were fighting the Irish. And the Irish were stronger than the Mafia. When he got there, he started fighting the Irish, and he was savage. Bombs, everything. He just cut loose with every fucking thing. He was 
not a guy who was a little kill crazy. Mm -hmm. and, and the Sicilian Mafia loved him because now the whole tide turned. I mean, he, uh, I forgot the guy's name, Moran or whatever it is, the boss of the Irish, he clipped him, he clipped everybody. Um, so, uh, and then uh, he took over and he was ruthless and tough. The Sicilian mob there loved him and uh, he became the boss. And he had a little bit of a good crew. They, they didn't even call themselves uh, Goza Nostra. They called themselves the Outfit. And they were almost a little separate than the rest of the families, from what I heard from Tato. Then, when he really took over, he was doing amazing things during Prohibition. And with unions, they didn't know what that even meant. They knew what a union was. But how was he making money? He took over unions made strikes, made deals with these big companies. If you want peace, you'd have to pay him. And he was making tons of money doing that. And he woke up the entire mob to the unions and the power of using and controlling the unions. You know, the unions don't really have you at heart. You think they do. I've dealt with unions all my life. They make deals for themselves. And they always give you, it's almost like politicians, tell you how good it's going to be for you. And a lot of times it is. I'll give you the car industry. They made a deal that everybody who retires gets, I don't know, 70, 75% of their salary, depending on how many years they worked. So the common worker loved it. It's a great thing. What did that do? to make that deal. And they gave money from the unions to the politicians, so everybody was good. Everybody was happy. But what did that do? That tacked on a huge amount of money onto a car. Because not only were they building cars and paying workers, now they had armies of people who retired and they were paying them. Where's that money gonna come from? Mm -hmm. You. When you bought a car, I bought a 1963 Chevy Impala Super Sport convertible with all the doodads on it, $3,200. I'm showing how old I am. <laughs> but anyway, it soon, that $3,200 car soon went up to 10,000, then 12. Then you started, for a shit car, you were paying 30. Now you're paying 60s and 70s mm -hmm. and 100 and whatever it is. That all happened for those deals with the unions. So when they make deals, for the politician and to look good with their people. And they robbed that money, the dues and stuff. That was, that was uh, beautiful money coming in. They took that money all the time. I'll give you another example. The Teamsters Union, they turned around and they said, they bought a piece of land, a piece of shit land. It was not bad, big piece. And uh, they got it real cheap. I'm gonna give you a hypothetical price, 30,000 back then. So they go to the Teamsters, the president, and they said, what you're going to do is build a new building, the headquarters of the Teamsters, 282. Okay. And it's going to be a gorgeous, beautiful building. All your people are going to love it. And you're going to buy the land for 200000 so they paid 30, they got paid 200, they made 170. Now, who's going to build the building? Companies that are controlled by the union, by the mob. So the mob and the union made a ton of money. Your dues, that's where they went. You'll get a guy in the union um, in a pretty high position, vice president, or whatever. He's making 250, 300,000 a year when you were making 25,000 a year, 30,000. He's your hero. Mm -hmm. Everything looks good and sounds good. It's like the politicians are doing now. Mm -hmm. They'll go, we're humanitarians. We're going to send hundreds of billions of dollars to Ukraine. Oh, we're so good. Sounds good, right? Mm -hmm. We can go into some native neighborhoods that are either black or Hispanic or whatever it is that are ghettos. And what do you think that fucking money would do for those neighborhoods? Mm. Our people. Fuck Ukraine. Yeah, 
the schools and education system and the education system after school the thing that just happened in hawaii oh. he gave them five hundred dollars per family of four what they, they could wipe their ass with that money right and then you turn around and send 20 billion over there what, a, what about the hawaiians are american citizens so we and we fall for all this bullshit over and over we're blindsided by it mm -hmm. You know, you get mafia guys, I've heard many mafia guys, some that I like, some I don't like, but they have the same story, because we see through it. Michael Franchise and people like that, we see through it. We've been part of those scams, especially Michael Franchise. Mm -hmm. He's a racketeer and he's a master of those schemes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he sees right through these things. I see through it too. Mm -hmm. So. Nice. Uh, Giovanni in the super chat, where did the whole no guns to the sit down rule come come from? Uh, did you ever have to get patted down before a meeting? And last question is, has anyone and was anyone ever whacked for being found with one on them? You would be whacked if you f were found. Here's the thing about bringing a gun. It's like going to your family, to your mother and father. Would you carry a gun? No, they're not a threat to you. That's your mother and father, that is family. We're family. We don't bring guns to each other in a meeting. We talk, we argue. If we can't straighten out, it goes higher or whatever. We don't kill each other at, at those things. That's sanctuary. Mm. Um, if you're in a war, maybe now that becomes a little bit of a different thing. But you don't bring guns to a meeting. This is your brothers. We're all brothers in Austria. You don't bring weapons. Where is your head? Are you scared? Or you want to commit a violent act against your brother? So we have to enforce a rule like that so that, like I said before, most of us have killed. Now, could you picture all of us taking guns to meetings all the time? One time there's a real heavy disagreement. It could turn into a gunfight. And some of our brothers will die over a gunfight. You may be at home with two or three brothers or sisters. And you just have an argument. You might even fight in the argument a little bit. You're not supposed to in the mafia. But, but it's, it's not death. When you're bringing guns, that's death. Do they pat down regardless just to check? No, I, I don't know of any. I've known of one meeting where they made people... I think it was either in Pennsylvania or Philadelphia, somewhere, it, the, the thing got caught on tape. They made guys get undressed mm -hmm. before they did things. Now, I've even done that myself. Not, I never made nobody get undressed, but I, a lot of times, if I was not comfortable with somebody, now it's not a made guy, I was by the gym, I would want to meet them in the steam room. So I had a towel around me and no, nothing else. He had a towel and nothing else. So I could see. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I didn't trust him. It wasn't a friend of ours, just a, a guy that I hear or see. I wasn't worried about a gun, I was worried about a bug. Mm -hmm. So, you know, even having somebody, you know, I, I saw a, a one in The Sopranos, mm -hmm. they told the guy to get undressed, and he didn't <laughs> want to get undressed. Yeah. And uh, no, we don't do that. I mean, I, I've never been in a meeting where anybody asked me to get undressed or, or I never saw anybody ask anybody to mm -hmm. get undressed. You found it in the cigar box, in the fake bottom. Yeah. All his tapes. Yeah, yeah. Big pussy. Jay Marie in the super chat, uh, who was the wisest boss you ever met in your opinion? And thanks for spending time with us. That's my man, Jay Marie. Jay Marie, it was almost me who was the smartest boss. But I'm not going to pass on that. The smartest boss from, you know, from history and things that I heard and saw and everything like that, boss level was Carlo Gambino, was one of the smartest guys. He really knew how to run a family the right way. He wasn't greedy, he wasn't selfish. I was talking in an interview with uh, Anthony uh, Reggiano and uh, Carlo Gambino, if you brought him a bag of money, he didn't ask you nothing. He took it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, if you brought him, let's say, 10000 he never questioned you. It was a gift to him. 
his end. Now, if you robbed 100,000 and he got 10, he's satisfied. You made 300,000, 500,000. Oh, you, you give me 10,000? You made 500,000? That's an insult and you could get in trouble for that. Because you got to give 10, 15, 20% up to the boss. It, it, depending on, you know, especially if it's an illegal thing, like a robbery or something. So uh, the difference is when, you know, I, I, I never dealt with Carl giving him money, but that was his reputation. I dealt with Paul. When I brought him money, an envelope or a bag of money, um, how did you get it? What did you do? I mean, 14,000 questions. As these questions are there, I'm in my mind saying, what do you give a fuck? I'm giving you a bag of money. Take it. I mean, it's not drug money. It's not anything like that, you know. But he, you know, he was different. And he never, it was not enough. If you gave him 10 or 15 percent, he felt 25 and 30 was better. So that was the greed part of him mm -hmm. a little bit. I had a situation like that with him. Um, I set up a whole thing. I actually got beat my end for 40,000. Everybody got their end. I made sure the, the union guys, everybody got their end. He got his end. When it came to my end, it didn't happen, and I got fucked. He actually, it was given to him. And they said, well, no, your end, we gave it to him. He'll give it to you. And I said, yeah, he'll give it to me. He never did. Mm. So. Wow. Well, we have over a little over 1,000 people in the chat, and this time is just flying by. So everybody hit the like button. Can you give them the contract, Sammy, to go ahead and hit that like button? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Please hit the hit the like button if you like it. Subscribe if you like it. Um, when it comes to anybody subscribing, mm -hmm. you know the, the, these things are important. I know we don't get no money out of that, but it's important that we know we're on the right path. Mm -hmm. We're doing the right thing. We're telling the stories legitimate. Um, you know, I got some questions from guys who are going to different places. I'm not going to mention their names and ask them questions. So they're asking me, what question should I ask this guy when I, no, I don't, I don't do that. I mean, I, I know questions you should ask them, but, you know, I, I saw a question and a thing with a kid. I want to bring up his name, by the way. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk about him. Okay. What, what's his name? Tell me his name now. We could say his name. Which one? Oh, the, which one? The one that asked Xavier. Oh, Xavier James. Yes. Xavier James, there's a kid, somebody sent me this video, who, what's that other guy who does the video? Which other guy? The guy who does the video. He was partners with Dominic for a while. Oh, Jeff? Oh. Jeff. Jeff, Jeff Nadu. Nadu. Nad Nashutz. What's his fucking name? Nadu? Yeah, yeah Jeff exactly. Nadu. No do. He's doing a fucking interview with, and questions like we're doing. Oh, and yeah. he brings a guy on, young guy. This Xavier, what? Xavier James. Xavier James. It's a Mexican kid, a tough, tough kid, but good kid. And he's questioning him. And he's going back and forth. And he's, he's questioning him. Why do you always bear mouth Sammy? Why do you do this? Why do you go along with this Mikey Scars or this or that or the other thing? What the fuck does Mikey Scars know? So Jeff and the dude, oh, he knows a lot. He was around as much as Sammy. Are you fucking joking? I mean, I was with him 24 fucking hours a day, seven days a fucking week, and the whole world knows it. Not only that, there's videos, FBI, state. I mean, so Mikey Scars knew more about him than me. Then it said when he said in 1988 at December, He's with John Gotti and he's telling, he's reading his mind about what John thinks about me. A year later, we go to jail. So how the fuck was he with John? We went together, we went to jail. He, he was never with John, never. Then he turns around, this Nadu tells him, well, he went to John's house. Yeah. Yeah. 
what kind of retarded shit are we listening to, bro? He went to his house. Yeah, he knew his kid, his son, and he, maybe he went over the house. Maybe he even slept there. Who the fuck knows? I didn't go there. I'm not, what am I going to do? Go to bed with him and his wife? I have my own house. I have my own wife. I have my own house. Why would I go to sleep? I, I went there. I remodeled the fucking thing. But why would I go there? So, like, he's more important because he went there. What they sleep in the door, in the kid's bed, in the dog bed, where did they, I mean, it's so stupid, it's fucking pathetic. So it's yeah. Jeff Nadu, obviously he's close with Michael, Mikey Scars, and, and they come up with these stories that are just idiotic. Yeah. They which don't is, even make sense. Which is hilarious to me because, you know, Jeff is begging to come down here. He is begging for another I didn't interview. want to bring that up, but you're right. No, he it's, called it's us pathetic. up. Begging to be partners with Obsessed. me. He's sick now that I went partners a little bit with uh, OC. OC. Yeah. Begging to be your co host. He was begging to be my co host. Now, now he's bad mouthing me because I don't want him as my co host because he's a fucking liar. Yeah. He don't know what the fuck it is to tell the truth. Right. And I don't need a guy like that around me. It's just two faced talking yeah. about both and sides. Now he's talking about, now he's sucking Michael uh, <laughs> Scars' dick, so whatever he's doing. Probably. But I mean, it, uh, you know, it's a shame. I want to repeat what a shame it is for those people to be doing what they're doing and constantly banging into people. You're taking whatever's left of the mafia and of people making a living on this, like Anthony and uh, what the hell's his name? Gene. In, Gene and Francis and the good, you Francis know. Francis and even the guy now in uh, uh, Philadelphia. What the fuck is his Merlino? name? Merlino. Molinos, mm -hmm. they're, they're making a living. Leave it the fuck alone with the name calling and bullshit. Yeah. If you got a story, tell it. If you don't have a story, go fucking find a job. Go do something else. Instead of just sitting here knocking people. Yeah. It just don't even make sense. And this kid, Xavier, went toe to toe with him. Yeah, he said it's Banging it out. Yeah. So he says, well, you're a, a Sammy lover. He said, no, I'm not. He said, but at least he tells the fucking truth. You guys just keep bashing him for no fucking reason. Yeah. And I know you don't know, you, you're not, you're not a, you yourself, you're not a pimple on his fucking ass. And you just want to play Mr. Tough Guy from some basement somewhere. <laughs> so he tells the kid, he says, you know, the, I, if, if, if I pay for your trip to go see Sammy, would you go see him for five minutes? No. Ten minutes? No. You wouldn't go see him? He said, I wouldn't want to talk for five minutes or ten minutes. I would like to spend a half hour with him and talk with him and hang with him a little bit. So, Xavier, if you're listening in any way, shape, or form, I got a half hour call that costs 400 bucks. Ask Amina or Anna that you want to make a half hour call I'll make a good deal with you. I'll make it a lot less than four. I appreciate what you did, and you're telling the truth. And you didn't praise me. You said I was a bad guy. I was not a good guy. I was not this. I like everything you said. You told the truth on how you feel. So it's crazy that we have to hear the truth from a fan, mm -hmm. not uh, a guy who's got a little bit of a voice because he's got the microphone. And it was, it was a beautiful thing that I, I heard that. I'm glad I, somebody sent it to me. I don't want to hear these fucking things with these guys yapping. Yeah. So a lot of times when you send me something, I don't even want to hear them. Because they, you know, it's so immature. And it's so ungangster. Yeah. How you could sit there and bear out one another all the time, every single day. That's all you told, that's all they do. I don't even get it anymore. Well, I don't get it. I think we're witnessing, too, that those people are eventually falling off the radar, as we've seen. You not know, only falling over happening. the thing, Anna. Not only that, I really feel someday this is a big, you know, people love crime stories, mafia stories. Someday this whole thing is just going to crumple because it'll be just garbage. Who the mm -hmm. fuck wants to keep hearing it? Right. You know, they want to hear what really happened. They had a grandfather in their life. He's a little proud of his grandfather, and he, he, you know, he wants to talk and whatever. Now you're taking that away from people. It's it, it, it's a shame yeah. what they're doing to the whole thing, and uh, that's why I told OC. He asked me the same questions, 
and I said, I heard Michael Francis say something, and he said, he's it's absolutely he's this, and I, he texts me occasionally, mm -hmm. tells me, Sammy, what the fuck are these guys doing? And I text back, I don't know, bro. I really don't know. Me and you had our little bullshit argument. It's over. I push his wine. He's got wine. I push him. You know, what do I agree with everything with him? No. But, you know, he's got his story. He probably don't agree with everything I say. I have my story. Right. Um, he's going around on a tour, doing things. I mean, that's what just all these guys, but they don't know nothing but talking negative. That's all they got. That's all they got. It's, 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 it's amazing comment. how you have any followers at all. This Nadu guy. He was with this with that big company. Barstool. The Barstool. And they chased him. Right. He was with Dominic uh, mm -hmm. Googlehead. <laughs> and they cha and he chased him. I mean, who else is going to chase him? Now he talks on, on him. Now he's, he's talking by himself. Maybe, Maybe yeah. now his wife will chase him. Yeah. Hey, they're, they're, they're fucking mutts. Yeah. Irrelevant. You know, I would have, I mean, there's people, here, there's a woman who sent me, made me this airstrip. It's a beautiful, I don't know if you could see it. Mm -hmm. It is beautiful. So, and she makes this, she makes candles and a few other things. So I was looking at it, I said, how does she, how does she make this? It's, it's all sparkles in here, it's for cigars. Mm -hmm. And it's beautiful. Now, if you want this, here's what I would do, here's me. I will, if you like this, let us know. I will give you her station where you can buy it from her. I don't need, I don't want to make money on it. I'll give you the, the access where you can buy candles from her, this from her, and a, few, and a few other things. So their mind is so closed that they can't yeah. do anything. Very low And me, content. I help people like <laughs> on channels. Uh, I just did a, uh, an interview, it didn't come out yet, we're editing it, mm -hmm. with Anthony and Gene. I read his book. They're not coming for reading his book. I read his book. He's a young kid, I gave him good advice while he was here. He's a tough kid. And uh, you get in his face, he, you know, I was like that years and years ago. He wants to fight. So then I told him, Gene, stop. Tell your stories. Don't get hot. Fuck these people. Whatever they say, they say. Don't, yeah. don't even bother with it, bro. Just stay with the truth. Tell your story. Matter of fact, he's Anthony's cousin. Mm -hmm. We just had a, a, a nice, we did what, over two hour view, uh, yeah. interview? Yeah. We did over a two hour interview, and it'll be coming out soon. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk to you guys on Patreon. Um, a lot of you guys who are on Patreon, you were very, very patient with me. I didn't get enough content out there, and I really took notice. I think I took advantage of it a little bit, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a lot of content that can't be, you know, I got shut down on Instagram the other day for putting out uh, Valentine's things. It was a joke. It was a, a young girl, what's her name? Sterling. Sterling was here, she's joking with me, and. And I'm Joe, we little hearts, we sent it out. They shut us down. I said, what the fuck are they shutting down? <laughs> Valentine uh, things. And it was the people that, it was the tags, right? People we sent it to. It was like, it was the Valentines that was like, I'm digging you like a hole in Staten Island. And it was like, you yeah, know, I'm I get it. I'm digging you like a hole in Staten Island. Now it's a stupid little joke or <laughs> they shut us down. Cause you're talking violent, right? violent uh, and then the other thing tagging people mm -hmm. that are violent people who do i tag i didn't take no terrorists i take michael francis i take the whole bunch but of you're people you're the only one who got censored which i'm is the only one who got sent that everybody else was showing yeah. it I, I got sent all right so maybe they got mad at me maybe the way i talk about biden or, or whatever the fuck it is i don't know but uh, i'm going to start putting a lot more content out on patreon yeah. Stuff I can't talk about or I think that puts me in trouble, I'm going to put it on Patreon. And uh, I know I watched the, one of the Gotti movies, and uh, the guy who played Neil's part said, if I don't curse, I can't talk. 
I, I, in other words, he's got so many curse words in him, he can't talk. That's part of his language. He's been in the street. Me, I've been in the street all my life. In the military, I went boxing. I did all, everything I did was rugged. And, and everybody cursed everybody. Not even in a bad way. You know, it's like the blacks would tell some, call somebody, the M, he'll call another black guy the M word, and vice versa. They just, it's the way they talk. Mm -hmm. Same thing with us. When you come up a hard way, it's Italian guy, the word fuck or motherfucker means nothing. It means, it's like a nothing thing to me. Yeah. It's part of my vocabulary. Um, so. It's like David Goggins. That's exactly what David Goggins says. He's like, yeah, this is how matter I fact, I, talk. I, I heard, you know I like Megyn Kelly. Mm -hmm. I, I got a ton of respect for her. She's outspoken, she tells the truth, she's ballsy, she's pretty. Everything about her I like, everything. And I heard her say, you know, she got in trouble, she said fuck. And she got, and she got mad that she, you know, they must have said something to yeah, her. Yeah. So she says, all right, I listen, I get it. But here, that's me. Fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> she said that. <laughs> it was so funny, it was hysterical. That oh she didn't care. Goodness. That's just, I mean, it's a common word. It's, it don't mean anything. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, evil, we, we, you know, there's a lot of evil shit being talked about and done that you could say, okay, this is evil stuff. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I, I want to read the super chat from Curtis. He says, I've been watching OC Shorts and you for years. I'm glad to see you both finally doing some work together and I'm looking forward to seeing more. Your biggest fan, Kurt. Kurt, I want to tell you, I give you my word, you know, if it's all right with him, OC, um, I'm gonna do a lot more with him. He feels the same way. We've communicated already since we've done it. Um, all of his, you know, comments and my comments put together, 99% of the people liked it. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, loved it. And uh, we're both happy with that results. And uh, I'm sure, and I hope, his subscribers, if you go to him, subscribe. I hope his subscribers blow up because of me. And the same thing with Anthony. Mm -hmm. Anthony's thanked us how many times. Oh, yeah. And now when this interview, he'll blow up again. Good. He'll make a, a legitimate uh, money coming in. And now Anthony's sent on hats and a few other things. Yeah. You know, and, and, and that's cool. Why would, why would you want to knock one another when you could do that? If they like mm -hmm. you, they'll buy you a fucking t-shirt or your hat or whatever the fuck you're selling. Mm -hmm. And uh, you make a living. You know, you're not going to make big, big bucks, but you'll make a living. You could make a good living. But you need, you know, a lot of uh, followers, a lot of people on subscribing and whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and it opens up other doors. Hollywood looks at those things, subscribers. Mm -hmm. If you have a lot of subscribers, I have did... My first interview I did with Patrick Big David, and he's a good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. um, he's done he's done interviews with anybody who's everybody. I'm one of the largest ones he's ever done. I'm at 21 million fucking. I think it's at 21 mm -hmm. million views. I'm one of the largest ones he's ever done. Yeah. Trump finds a video that I did. He puts it on his station. 11 million views. Yeah. Now I have a, a, a Trump and Sammy t-shirt. Trump <laughs> yeah. for president, me for vice president. I really don't want to be a vice president. I don't want to be the president. I want to be me. I want to be Sammy the Bull. I want to do a scripted show, the story of my life, and leave that behind. I mean, by the time it's, if it lasts as long as The Sopranos, I'll probably be dead. They'll put a R.I.P. or whatever it is. Mm. Um, but I want that to be part of my heritage, part of my... Legacy. My history, part of my stuff. And I got all my heart and soul into it. And we're, we work on truth on everything mm -hmm. so that this movie is done great. It's a scripted show. It's not a movie. It's a scripted show. But so, uh, you know, that's all I want and to do these things 
and I answer so many people. I get so many people thanking me for the had an argument with their wife or vice versa, and they're asking me for advice. They come back, Sam, if it wasn't for you, how many people, when I start talking about the drugs, mm -hmm. talking to me that I helped them stop taking drugs? Yeah. And gave them a little support. Mm -hmm. And that's what they need. We got people poisoning them, different countries poisoning them. And we look down on them. You junkie, you this, you that, right. fuck you. And the stigma. That, that, all that money that goes to Ukraine. How about these kids? Right. And it's not just kids. And it's not just boys. It's boys, it's girls, it's cases one after the other. But it makes me happy to see that I'm able to have some legitimately tell people. I've told people, you know, talk to people about joining the mafia. No. No. I don't give a fuck. I tell kids, I give them tough love. You want to join the mafia? Good. Go ahead. Go ahead. Be, be a tough guy. You'll kill some of your friends. Maybe they'll kill you. I got 22 plus years in prison. Enjoy your stay. Um, all kinds of fucking things. So if you want to do it, asshole, go ahead. That's what you're going to look forward to. Right. So, and, and a lot of people, I, I think I heard from their families, said that done more good for my kid than, than anything else. Because sometimes you can't just tell a kid, don't do it, don't do it, it's bad. It's not, God won't love you. You can't tell him that. Got to tell him what the fuck he's about to do. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. It's like a guy jumping off a bridge. You could talk to them only so long, and then you gotta tell them, go ahead, jump. But your life is over. And not only is your life over, you're gonna destroy your fucking family's lives. You know how many of them are gonna be sick about what you just did? And sometimes that wakes somebody up. Of course, if they're standing on the bridge, they want to commit suicide. So you're not going to stop them. So I tell them, yeah, jump. But do you know how many, what you're going to do to these kids you got? How many kids you got? Your wife, your kids, you got mother alive, the father alive. You know how they're going to feel? You're going to, you're going to, they're jumping off that bridge with you, you fucking bum. Jump. Yeah. And wait, they wake up sometimes. But that's my way of helping. Sometimes yeah. it works, I guess sometimes it don't. Well, J.B. Weld in the super chat, Sammy, um, is asking for your wisdom on this one. Um, I'm asking for myself. What advice would you have on how to forgive yourself for something that you did to someone? Something I didn't do that I should have that hurt someone badly. How do you forgive yourself for not? It's you know? the toughest thing in the world. You've got to live through it. And it's, it's life. It, it probably for you to ask that question, you've become a better man and you, you have regrets. That's, you don't have to tell the world. You, you sound like you, you, you're curing already because you're recognizing that you did something bad. How do I, just keep going forward. It happens and made you a better man. It's making you a better man. You're not gonna hurt somebody as easy anymore. Maybe you'll never do it again, thank God. But that's why. And if you want to believe in religion a little bit, do that. Anything that helps you get through it. But look at yourself in the mirror and be a better man. Be a better man. Once you're a better man, you'll feel better about yourself. You don't have to prove to the rest of the world nothing. You got to prove to yourself that you're a better man and you'll get through it. You'll say, okay, I did this. I did the same thing. I know what I did. I know what's bad. I, that's why I changed my life. That's one of the reasons why I changed my life. That's why I do this. I don't need this. I really don't. It helped me cure. Talking my podcast, talking about my stories. It helped me go forward. People calling me and asking me for advice like you're doing right now. You're doing me good. You're curing me. You're helping me go forward in my life. Just keep doing what you're doing, bro. It's not easy. There's no 
no genius who's going to give you a, the right answer right away. Nobody. Not religion, no, no, nothing. You got to find it inside. And the way you're talking, the question you ask, my opinion, you're on that road. You need you. You need you. Amen. You know, Sammy, when I was studying psychology, um, there's actual research studies that say, that talk about the constructs of guilt versus shame and how guilt, and it sounds like JB has some guilt and or shame, that you can overcome guilt by doing good deeds or helping people or making your life better, just like you said, those choices of making your life better. Right. Shame's a little bit of a stickier construct that's a little bit harder to get rid of and work through introspectively, but guilt, you can overcome it by just doing, making good choices, better choices, helping people to feel good about yourself. Right, and, and shame too, the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a, yeah, I agree with Anna, it's a little uh, more difficult, but um, you can do it. It's completely and totally up to you. Once you recognize you've done something wrong, shameful, wrong, whatever you want to call it, once you recognize it and you're changing, that's it. That's what, that's what gives you salvation. Mm -hmm. I used to talk about the Johnny Keys hit or certain things like that. I couldn't get through doing the hit. I did it with James Carroll without choking up. I didn't want to talk about it. Talking about it, getting it out of me, and, my, and, 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 and finding that what I did was wrong. Now I'm, I'm, I, I feel better about myself. I feel better about what I'm doing. If I could put this down as a legacy, like I said before, for my wife, my children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren to come, they're gonna have a different feeling towards me. Mm -hmm. They're gonna say, that's my poppy. That's, he did the wrong thing, he stood up, he did this, that, and the other thing. And uh, that's what I wanna leave. That's what I wanna accomplish now. And so many other people that I never thought I would be able to reach or talk to or, get, or, or give them advice, who the fuck am I? I dropped out of school in the eighth grade. Anna could give you advice. She's uh, literally a, a psychologist already, just about. Inches away from that. But um, I, I, I went through this, so I, I, maybe I'm a psychologist a little bit too now. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that's the path. You're on the right path, bro. You're on the right path. Keep living that path every day. You know, I go to the gym every day. I could see a woman or a guy, I don't even care, if they're like, come on, I'm opening the door, and they're like six, seven feet. I could just walk in. They, they didn't get there yet. But for some reason, I wait, I push myself out of the way and hold the door. And that, oh, thank you so much. A big black guy was behind me today. Thank you, thank you. Then when I went to the other door, because they went in before me, he's holding the door for me. I said, mm -hmm. thanks, bro. It's a smile, and the, the little things make you know you changed. Mm -hmm. Maybe years ago, I wouldn't have held that door. And I, my answer to them was, I'm in no rush, I'm retired. Mm -hmm. And they giggle or laugh. That giggle or laugh is priceless to me. I haven't had that in a long, long time. I have it. By holding a fucking door. By waiting one minute. By saying good morning. I do those things. And I'm so comfortable with myself now. It's a cure. It's a cure. For me. I hope it will, it'll be for you. But you're on that road, pal. Thank you, Sammy. James in the super chat. I love you, boss, and I've always looked up to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, pal. Ocam's Razor. It's my 22nd birthday today, and I hope you're having a great President's Day. <laughs> Ocam's Razor. Yeah, well, Happy birthday. Uh, you're 22nd. You're, you're young yet. I don't, I'm not too excited about Presidents right now, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I hope in the future that the better President days. But what makes me happy right now is not the President Day, but your birthday. Awesome. <coughs> Let's see. We Can have one. Mm -hmm. Sammy, can you give a couple of shout-outs to um, Ariana? 
and Lily Rose, two little girls that are watching right now. Ariana and Lily Rose, okay. um, have a great day. Where are they from? Uh, Lily Rose is in the UK. Ariana, I think, is in Boston. All right, I don't know what the weather is in Boston or UK, so but have a nice day. <laughs> Enjoy the day. Lily Rose says that she just she came back from her soccer tournament and their team won. Oh, very good, very good. Very good. Keep it up. Sports is a great thing, too. It's not a really good thing. Nice. Um, Puke Bucket in the super chat. Hey, Puke Bucket. <laughs> Sammy, you should move back to New York and run for mayor. You just may win. Yeah, the government, I'm on parole for the rest of my <laughs> life so far. So far. Uh, uh, they won't let me back in New York, let alone being the mayor, I don't think. But uh, I think I would be better than the people are there. No kidding. I, 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 listen, I was born and raised in New York. I love New York. I love New Yorkers. I've seen what they went through with the World Trade Center, mm -hmm. how they stuck together, black, white, Hispanic. It didn't matter. Men, women, they're good people. What's happening there, I got my daughter, my granddaughter, and I got other family there and friends. It's a shame. I would love to be the man. I know I, whatever the, I'm, you know, like I, I said that story before, four guys go and beat up a cop. <sighs> now, I'm not a cop lover. I'm not a cop. I don't hate them, but that's horrible. And you allow it? You let the guys go? Just no big deal? Mm -hmm. So what are they, they're going to go and beat up somebody else. And, and next one won't be a cop. Next one will be a woman. I saw a guy knock a fucking old woman out today oh, on, a, on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I want to vomit. I know. I mean, it's evil. Uh, yeah. Um, Harnam Kar, if I hope I said it right. I adore you, Sammy, and would love to meet you. Stay blessed. Uh, someday we might meet. Who knows? <laughs> uh, my knowledge to you is asking about. Can you please speak on Ralph Wiggs Gallione, who was with John and Angelo on the McBratney hit? You know what's the name? Uh, my knowledge to you is the name of the viewer. No, no, the the guy who Ralph Wiggs Galeon. That's the guy who you know. You just brought something to me. Remember that name, because that's the guy who was the actual shooter uh, of the the Irish guy in the bar. He was the shooter. Mm -hmm. Now John and Angelo got rid of him because they were afraid he would cooperate or something. He's the actual shooter, and John and Angelo killed him, got rid of him. And uh, that's how he disappeared, because they were afraid that, that they, when they got pinched, that he, he was going to get pinched and he was going to be, and they were going to have a problem. So, uh, and that's why they got a short prison sentence, because he's the guy who came from the shadows and did the shooting. So the witnesses, when they went to court, they didn't see John shoot him or Angelo. They saw this guy. But they got rid of him. And he wasn't part of their case. That, that's, I never remembered his name. That's his name. Oh, wow. Great question. Thank you. Yeah, a great question. Uh, Jimmy in the super chat. Sammy, please tell my brother Greg to go and get his fucking shine box. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's your job to do. You know, I don't know him. So that's, you know, that's, I think that's one of the greatest uh, oh, uh, things in a movie that was done. And it wound up being one of the greatest uh, uh, insults. Go get your fucking shine box. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I that was great. Uh, Zach in the super chat. Sammy, did you ever hang out or do business in Hell's Kitchen, or was it exclusively Westies territory until Paul took over their crew? I w I went in and out. I didn't stay there. We didn't have any clubs or anything there. The Westies were there. I dealt with the Westies quite a, you know, quite a bit. Some of the Westies like. Uh, I don't know if I should mention his name. Fogarty was a real fucking tough guy. I did time with him as well. Uh, great, great guy. I, I think he changed his name, so it don't matter. But, uh, and I'm still, you know that, I'm still in touch with him. He's a friend of mine. And uh, so, uh, but I never really hung out in Hell's Kitchen where they were. I went there quite a few times. Mm -hmm. Let's see, Gas Can Lip, also in the super chat. Sammy, in the afterlife, if you see John Gotti as a ghost, are you going to box him? I'm going to shoot him. <laughs> you want to know something? I'm not even going to shoot him. I'm not going to box him. Um, 
I, you know, all, uh, listen, I had a rough time. It went bad, it went, went sour, very sour. You know, some divorces you break up and it's still, you're, like me and my wife, we're still good mm -hmm. friends. We're divorced. I wish that would have happened with me and John. It was ugly. The breakup was ugly. But um, uh, I still have respect for him. Um, I loved him at one point. Uh, I won't lie. If I saw him in the afterlife, I, I, I don't know. Maybe we could give a hug and, and, a, and a kiss on the cheek and, and, and uh, say that was then, this is now. Maybe we can go forward in a different way. I, I only wish that's possible. I wish I could do that same exact thing with uh, Louis Melito and uh, Nikki Cowboy and Michael DeBant, you know. But this life is brutal. You got to tell the truth. You got to be careful of what you do. And uh, sometimes you wind up dead. He betrayed me. I betrayed him. People could say whatever the fuck they want. I can care less, at, especially at this point. Right. I think half the world knows it. They documentary. Uh, you know, we had f film people here the other day when we were working with Anthony and uh, Gene. Mm -hmm. um, and a guy from Czechoslovakia was a camera guy, and is smiling. I'm going to oh, tell man. the story. Great, yeah. And uh, he's Czechoslovakian, and he's got his own production company and everything like that. And when the day was over, he said to me, he said, uh, I would love for you to tell the Fiala story again. So I said, I did a video. No, again. Why? He says, I got a guy who was at the party, 80-year-old guy. He's got pictures and every fucking thing. Would you do that? He, I said, well, what story did he tell? He was at the party. He said, 100%, word for word, what you tell in your story, I listened to the whole thing. He said the same exact thing. Mm -hmm. And I think it was you, Anna, who turned around and said, there's so many things that you said that are coming back 100% verified by either government or state or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I got these couple of scumbags that I lie about every time. I lied about my name. Did I? I don't even know. <laughs> but um, yeah. so it was, it, was, it was very good, very, you know, to yeah. hear that, especially that, you know, word for word and whatever. And uh, so many other things, so many, I could name over and over and over again, mm -hmm. which is a good thing. And I ta taught, you know, talk, talk to these guys. When you open up a station, tell the truth. These yeah. people are not stupid, number one. Mm -hmm. They're mob fans and, and mob buffs. They'll know after a while you're lying and you're full of shit, mm -hmm. one. Two, that fucking camera it seems like it catches you in everything. Oh, yeah. You know, when you're a fucking liar or you're a fake, you can't hide from this camera. It catches you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So. Sammy, we have about 11, a little over 1,100 people in the chat can, and only 493 likes. That's a problem. Yeah, yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> that's, that's a third. That's a third of the people. Come on. L listen. You, if, if I could get this to seven eight hundred right now, I'll sing you a song. How about that? Let's go, guys. Let's go. Let's watch it fly. I'll sing about somebody who's personal to me. And uh, is it going up? No, nope. mm. not yet. Come Let's on, go, come, come on, on, guys. Click it. Like, like, like. Oh. Moving the needle a little bit. Um, Eric Helms, in the meantime, hi, boss. So what are your favorite New York City restaurants? Um, I, you know, in New York City, there was so, so many. There was a place, Mary's uh, Italian restaurant in Little Italy. There was a bunch of places. I don't remember all their names. I stood mostly when I was in Brooklyn. The places I grew up with and I took care of me and I had great food and great times. Even when I got bigger and I had money, I went back to those same places over and over and over again. Ponte Vecchio's and there's so many of them. You know, New York, I was telling somebody today in the gym, he was telling me about restaurants and food. I said, in New York, the food has got to be great. There's so many restaurants, it's ridiculous. and. 90% of them have great food. 
or 80 percent. So if you're going to open up a restaurant and you don't have good food, you're dead. Because these people are used to eating good food no matter where they go, just about. And they know the difference. Mm -hmm. So you've got to have great food. And I think that's why they have such competition that the food is good. I talked about the pizza stuff and said, how come, you know, I had pizza in New York. It was great. I ate it over here in Arizona. It wasn't that good. I said, you know, years ago, there was a pizzeria and they made their own dough and they did everything. It was great, the pizza. And uh, they took the guy, same recipe, same everything. And they went to Florida and they made pizza. And it sucked. So they couldn't figure out, well, what's the, what's the problem? And someone, one of somebody there said, maybe it's the water. They got bottled water from New York, brought it to Florida, and made the pizza. It was great. Again, same wow. thing. Mm -hmm. It was the water. So over here, is the water's different. So, I mean, sometimes it's a simple thing like that. Now, the water's too heavy and too expensive to, you know, bring back and forth. And matter of fact, I think the guy was either related or very friendly with uh, Joe Butch. It was his the guy who had the pizzeria, and they opened up a place over there. And the guy went there. So he was making the dough, everything the same, and it was terrible. It was the water. Wow. You're making me hungry. Me too. I'm, I'm thinking of that pizza. <laughs> pizza was great. Grimaldi's is good over here. Grimaldi's is good all over the place. It's good here too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Brown in the super chat. Uh, uh, Sammy. Sammy, did you know Mickey Boy Paradiso's brother, Phil, who flipped? He also allegedly whacked Greg Scarpa's brother, Sal, because he knew Greg was an informant. No, I don't know. I didn't know. I knew Mickey Boy very, very well. And he was also very friendly, very tight with Frank Chico. He's a good guy. I think he's still alive. Great guy. Um, I didn't know his brother. And I didn't know he whacked uh, whoever he whacked. You know, I don't know that. Thank you. We're up to 660. Oh, 662 likes when we hit that 700. Sammy's dazzling us with his vocal cords. Yeah, well, I'm going to sing about somebody, and you, I think you're going to recognize it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just my thoughts wants to know, did you hear about Scarpa killing the racists in Mississippi before Greg got caught or what really happened down there? I've never heard you speak on this. Yeah, I know the whole story. I know the whole story. What happened is that um, some white supremacist group got uh, some black people and killed them, hung them, whatever they did. And Two or three white guys, I think one or two of them were Jewish, they went down to help the black people. And uh, the supremacist guys grabbed them and killed them too. And I think they buried them, didn't know where it was. There was a big investigation, a whole thing, the FBI, they couldn't find out who did it. Greg Scopper was a rat all his life, just about. They got him, and he was a tough guy, to go down there and try to find out. Greg Scarpa Sr. went down there, got the racist people, put a gun in their fucking mouth. The guy says, you ain't going to shoot. You're a fucking agent. He said, no, I'm not an agent, and I'm going to shoot. And they knew who he was. They knew who he was, and they told what was going on and so on and so forth and they solved the crime mm. but um, you know it, it didn't come out until years and years and years later so i know that whole story okay correct me if i'm wrong is that the movie mississippi burning is that what mississippi burning was about i uh, guess but I, I didn't see the movie so I, I don't know how close it is yeah i didn't see the movie but yes that was the movie was made about greg scrapper incredible right. Wow, there you See, go. There you go, Justin. Junior Michaels. cooperated too. Mm. His son later on in life. Awesome. Thank you, Sammy. Um, at rthing.tv, Sammy, you know, again, Sammy reads all your messages, guys. He answers some, some we use for the live, so here we go. rthing.tv. Emery, Sammy, as I understand, when you're sentenced, a judge doesn't specify your solitary confinement. 
a staff member or warden of any particular prison does. Am I not correct? Providing I am correct, can you state why Warden Bob Hood is a decent individual as he either agreed to or made the call to keep you in the hole all that time? Um, you're right on this point that a judge sentences you. He has nothing to do with where they put you. Um, that's Washington. Bureau of Prisons puts you where they want to put you at. According to where I was, the ADX Supermax, the whole prison is locked down. He didn't put me in a hole. The whole prison, it's the, the, it's the, the toughest prison, so to speak, in the country. And it's a Supermax. And everybody's in that hole. And I did an interview with Warden Hood, if you want to look at it. He was a decent human being. He has orders to run the prison. He can't take you and put two in it. He can't do favors. He's got to run it the way it is. But he ran it very humane. Mm -hmm. He tried to help people because he knew it wasn't humane. And that's why I, I wound up friends with him. I did a video with him. And if you look at that video, he explains himself. He's fighting for prison reform. That alone will tell you that he's a good man saying that I had to follow orders and do my job as a warden. But he never uh, overdid his job. Mm -hmm. He always tried to help you and make your time a little bit easier. So that was the difference. Now, if you had a warden who wanted to be a prick, with the conditions there, then he, you would have, it would have been over. That would have been hell altogether. Mm -hmm. um, but he really tried hard to he knew it. That time, if you see it, when I had the nurse, she had tears in her eyes for me. She had sympathy. She, but she worked there. It doesn't mean she was bad. She, didn't, she knew it was bad, but that's what the, that prison is. It's for you, generally the worst of the worst. It's for guys who kill in prison over and over again, not for your street crime, but for what you do in prison normally or if you were horrendous on the outside. So you were right about the judge he has no control over that. The warden don't either. It's Washington, some politicians who set the pace of how that thing is going to go. Bureau of Prisons, that's way above his head. So he just goes there, he's got a job to control the prison, run it right, but he was very, very humane in everything he did with people. And I'm not just talking about me. I'm talking about the whole joint. He had a great, great reputation amongst the inmates. Mm -hmm. And uh, the only time you got once in a while in the yard, but it was brutal to have that kind of, but he didn't make that prison. Right. It's not his rules. He just became a warden there. But he's fought a whole bunch of times um, for a lot of things. Look at the, the video I did with him. Mm -hmm. It's on our, our thing TV. Yeah. And uh, he was a great guy. Yeah, and he's always updating you and sending us emails about, with these new articles about how the correctional officers are actually abusing the inmates and, you know, all about prison reform and how to change some structure and right. infrastructure. And, and, and he yeah. goes after, when that happens, mm -hmm. you could see it in him. It, when oh, that yeah. happens, he gets really upset and goes after them. Mm -hmm. So he's not just all talk. Now, coming down and sitting down with me, um, I will guarantee you it gave him a rough time in his life, those people. Yeah. They must have said, what the fuck are you doing fighting for prison reform? You're a warden. Shows you what kind of man he is. He's a man's man. Yeah. He took, he's taking the heat. He's still fighting with me. What was the thing he sent today to card with two people in the cell? Oh, yeah. He, he sends little funny edits all the time about it shows Sammy and Ted Kaczynski and they're in bunk beds and Ted Kaczynski is on the top bunk and he's asking you some, is it time? I don't know if I got some question, some silly question. And you're on the bottom. You're like, fuck off, Ted. <laughs> fuck off. Ted Bundy. So, Ted, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, he's a good guy. He's got a good sense of humor. He's got a good wife, good family. Mm -hmm. um, 
I know of them. I don't know them personally, but I know of them. Mm -hmm. And he's a good man uh, all the way around. And thank God, thank God, he was the warden there. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that I'll bet almost every guy who's in that prison while he was the warden will tell you the same thing. Yeah. So he's got witness after witness after witness of what he was, his character and everything like that. Yeah. Now, I've been in places, I've been in bullshit places like uh, in, here in Arizona with uh, Sheriff Joe oh, was a fucking dick and a yeah. half. Yep. You got two slices of bread. One was white and one was pumpernickel. <laughs> and one of them had the green mole on it. Uh, and you'd have to cut it off. Yep. Now, we found out when I was in there that the homeless shelter, the, the, the stuff the homeless people didn't eat, they donated it to the prison. You were giving it to us. I said, but this fucking food has got green mold on it. Green bologna. Green bologna, all kinds yeah. of weird shit. The Ladmo bags. Yeah, and he was, he, was, he was brutal the way he ran that place. Yeah. You know, Arizona sometimes in the summer, 110, 115, 120, pop. Not too mm -hmm. often, but it gets there. He didn't shut the, he shut the air condition. I didn't have no air condition. It's all concrete and steel. Imagine how much, what the temperature was. Outside in the tents. No, this was inside. Oh, you're inside. Okay. Inside. And downstairs he had cells that were air conditioned, air conditioned for dogs. And so he was humane. Right. But and I was watched guys sitting like I'm sitting, and just fucking keel over and fall on the floor. Jeez. And I said he died. No, I said no, no. Said me watch. It's the heat. And we had to take salt pills. They oh issued God. salt pills. I mean that that's brutal. That's bad. And that's a shit. That's a that's a that's a jail. It's not even a ma maximum prison or nothing. So. Imagine if this guy was the warden of the ADX. Oh, God. I mean, you know what the death rate would be? Yeah. Enormous. And now, I know stories that guys try to go on a hunger strike. He would come in and force feed you. Yep. He wouldn't let you die. And he would sit with guys who had problems. Mm -hmm. Sit with them as a warden and talk for a long periods of time. Right. Usually they come in two, three minutes and walk by. He would come in quite a while. So, yeah, but you were right in the first part that the judge has nothing to do with where you're sentenced or your conditions or anything like that. The only time he has a little bit to say with that is before you're found guilty and before you're sentenced because if it's too harsh, you can't fight your case. Your, your lawyers can make that argument. Me, John Gotti, and Frankie Lachico, uh, Frankie Lacasio, mm -hmm. Our lawyers made that argument. We were in the hole when we first, first got pinched in 1990. They wouldn't let us out. And uh, it was hard to fight our case like that. And the judge ruled against it. They got us out. Wow. Yeah, that, that table in the back with Warden Hood is incredibly powerful. I, it, it's, it a, it's amazing. It is. It is. And like I said, don't just take my word. I guarantee you, if you know people who are in there... Warden Hood, the place was shit. Yeah. It's anti, it's, it's insanely lonely, yeah. for no better words. But he didn't add to that problem. He always tried to help with that problem. I mean, the guy's telling you a story about his one-on-ones with Ted Kaczynski and getting into Ted Kaczynski's mind and the jogging and the, see the family. It's incredible. Yeah, he would try anything to get you cheered up, mm -hmm. to get you in the right way. Even, you know, in 2004, they stopped smoking. Now, he could have came in, took all the cigarettes, stopped it, and that's it. He didn't do that. I was there. Mm -hmm. He said, he sent the memo out. I have no control over it. They're stopping smoking. Whatever's in the commissary, I'm not going to take it away. Right. And whatever you have in your cell, I'm not going to come in and take it. But as of such and such a date, I'm not selling it no more. I can't. So I went when that thing came out. I must have bought five, six packs of cigarettes. 
-hmm. And uh, but as, after a while, it runs out, and I stayed almost 13 years without smoking in prison. Wow. Because of that law, it did me. That's probably why I'm alive. Mm -hmm. But um, it was brutal because in there, you know, you have nothing. And it sounds like that little bit you have, they yeah. took it away. But he didn't forcibly take it away. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. And he gave you a warning. It's got to happen. I have no control over it. But I'm not going to come and take it out of your cell. And I'm just not going to sell it no more. Me, 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 me. Are we at 700? <laughs> We've got 755 almost. All right, so let me sing one of my new songs. Oh, God. <laughs> Are you guys ready? You ready? Oh, you're ready, kids. <laughs> Who are we talking about here? What are we singing? It's howdy duty time for all you boys and girls. It's howdy duty time for oh, all you boys and girls. Na 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 na. It's howdy duty time. Na 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 na. And that's it. <laughs> I hope we don't get copyrighted by howdy duty. <laughs> yeah. Sing that's awesome. Song. They want an Ooh. Italian song. An Italian song. I wanna be Americana, <laughs> Americana. Affangula, festa de mamma, da affangula, you and this song. I can't sing an Italian song. I love it. Sammy, I got one or two more super chat questions for you before we sign off. We have been on for almost two hours. Wow. Flew by. Uh, gas can lip. Sammy, any technique. What is it? Gas can lip. Gas can lips? Yeah. Gas can lip. Sammy, any techniques on how to juggle or date multiple women without them finding out about each other? Thanks. Guess can. You got your lips all over the place as it is on, the, on guess games and every place else. You can't hide it a little bit? They're on fire. Yeah, yeah. Listen, women have, listen, we're, we're guys, we talk with each other, we ask each other questions. Women do the same shit, bro. It's, you know, yeah, go out with a girl from another town, another, you know, but they, they talk to each other too. It's hard to, it's hard to, you know, keep those secrets, so. Yeah, especially with the internet and Snapchat, everybody's getting yeah. on camera. Yeah. Um, Cardinal wants to know, did you ever hug Steven Seagal for Valentine's Day? Did he need a hug? No, I, I didn't Seagal? hug him. No, I, I didn't hug him, but he needed a hug. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, we had um, over 1,100 people in the chat, Sammy, and your likes are up to 769. Let's remind the people to go watch the OC Shorts with Sammy. He talks about a lot of you know stuff he hasn't talked about, so it's up. Yeah, and that's going to continue. So, and listen, a lot of you guys, I'm going to I'm going to talk about Patreon one more time. You know, if I'm I'm working on some really heavy shit, I can't expose it all. It's going to come out soon. What, what I'm working on and what I'm doing. And um, if you go on P Patreon, I'm going to talk about it and, uh, and I'm going to keep you updated on the progress, what we're doing, who we're picking as actors, actors, all kinds of things. Really information I think you're going to love. And uh, we're supposed to tell the news and first and do all these things. When we get started, you know there's no control of me so <laughs> i'm going to be telling you before you hear it in the news so uh i love you guys and uh, i'll talk to you soon so let me end uh, my normal way adios motherfuckers